And welcome good people, this is Vidui and we are here in Naviscane in the new version in 7 days to die 17.3. It is the experimental version but unless they find any big bugs I'm assuming it's gonna be released in the stable branch before too long. So thank you for joining me and of course I know you've already subscribed right so if you haven't make sure you go and do that but uh, I won't have to remind you because it really does help me out a lot. So there's been some nice changes or updates in 17.3, maybe not quite all that I wanted, but I'm going to go through some of the highlights that at least I like and that I'm glad that they have been working on. So let's have a look here. Obviously, one of the big problems or challenges or complaints that people have had with Alpha 17 is the random world generation, the RWG, and they have been working hard on that one. So there are Two changes in the random world generation that uh, Alpha 17.3 has put in place. One of them is uh, one of the items that people have been fairly frustrated with for a long time in that there's a lot of duplication of these PIs. Like you can see here, there's just tons of these radio towers. I mean, sometimes you literally, like you can see here, there's probably about one, three, five, fifteen within a small area and of course that's a big problem because it means that you're lacking all the other POIs and this is something they have apparently fixed they've reduced or eliminated this replication of the same POI another thing that you'll probably see let me see if I can go over here they do mention that uh, they fixed an issue with the POI not checking which biome it's spawning in I think this is where in the world currently in 17.2 and early you might see POIs that are spawning in one biome but it's actually attended for another biome meaning it might be a radiated broken ruined burned building but it's actually spawning in say a forest or in the snow biome so I believe that might also have been looked at and hopefully it's been fixed so these are two really nice fixes for 17.3 They've also reworked the roads to be more vehicle friendly because again, that's been an issue. You see all these really weird roads being constructed and some other things like where layout and placement of PIs and cities. I guess it's one of the big things that they are changing for or updating for Alpha 18 and they've decided to backport some of this into 17.3 because let's face it, without a proper random world generation, 7 days to die just is not really good. So one of the things changed or added in 17.3 is control over the post-processing, generally some graphics uh, options that you don't have in the options of the game itself. So on Reddit, people were saying that if you did a GFX PP for post-processing, enable zero, you should see a change in your FPS. Some people were seeing almost doubling. And you see mine is about around 70. And if I put this as zero, you don't see much changes like one or two fps i suspect it really depends on what system you have i mean uh, whether the actual gives you extra frames i don't really seem to be getting much at all so i'm here at 82 83 let's remove it maybe an extra two three so try it out uh, it really might depend on what system you had you have your as far as oh that's a lot of uh hmm, that's a lot of them <laughs> down there uh, it might really depend a lot on what system you have and uh, whether you're having issues with the post processing uh, i got a pretty good graphics card and maybe that really helps to so try that out some people have reported that that could even double your frames per second at a slight graphics degradation so at least try it out Another thing I'm really, really excited about, especially making videos, is this whole god casting. You'll see that if I do it, normally if I move around, I basically will fly around and I shift so I go a bit faster, but it's a little bit tedious. Now with this, you can shift Q and you basically move 100 meters or up to a surface if that's what you're targeting. And that's really, really nice. Of course, in normal gameplay, it doesn't really matter. But if you're testing things out or if you're making videos like I am, it's a huge impact because it just makes it a lot faster. I don't have to manually just move around, which just takes time. So for me, I'm really excited about that part. And it's one of those things that it just, it should have been in for a long time. And some changes, give self XP, it's not modified by the XP and multiplier. You know, I don't really see that uh, mattering too much. There's one that says explosions wake sleepers even if no damage. So let me get a rocket launcher here. 
rocket launcher. Because I I didn't know that was an issue actually. That uh, uh, can I get them spawned in here, please? Hello. They all vanished. Previously, maybe they were not spawning. Okay, here they are. Unless they're actually taking damage. So let me do this. Okay, I don't see any difference there. Okay, there's definitely no difference there. Okay, that one took damage. I woke up. No, this is actually definitely not fixed. You saw the lady took damage from the rocket launcher and she woke up. But it says explosions wake sleepers even if no damage. And these ones are definitely not being woken up. Let me try that here. And of course I miss. Oops. Let me remove my FPS like that. And so that one took damage obviously and he woke up. And the rest of them are still sleeping. So this part is uh, not properly implemented. Now these three took damage and they obviously woke up. But no one else did. So yeah, this might have been added. But no, this is, this is not functional. Maybe there are some other instances. Maybe it depends. Maybe it's like, uh, let me see if I do a pipe bomb. Maybe that matters. Will that wake everyone up? No. So this I might have been added, but this is definitely not working for sure. Okay, so this is not, this is not working. So let's go down the list a little bit here. So quest now will try to find the closer PIs. Doesn't really matter, but it makes it a little bit smoother. Repair kit changes, I guess is good. Sun and moon, I guess I really don't notice that. Maybe they've just tweaked it. It's probably a pretty small thing. Um, there is an issue about wearable items no longer being able to be activated while on tool belt. I wonder why. I haven't really seen that being issued. Maybe there's something increased breath hold duration. There's hardly any water around, so that doesn't really change. We balance stealth noise levels. That's something that has been an issue. We're going to have to figure out how that really changed it. Because stealth right now is, is really, really weird. And it says explosions on zombies to just damage closest collider like animals. So let's try that. Let's do a spawn 25 and let's be zombie and let's do a YN. And let's let them spread out just a little bit. Stop. Oh, come on. Don't do that. Poor guy. So it says it's only going to damage the closest collider like animals. So maybe if I shoot here. Maybe all of them shouldn't be damaged. That might have been actually the case. The ones behind that are sort of blocked don't seem to necessarily take damage unless it's a distance thing. If I do... Yeah, it's, they do block. If you notice when I shot here, these ones got damaged, but I've, when I've shot here and they were blocking, they didn't take any damage. So they have changed a little bit like that. I guess it hits the closest one and the other ones are sort of being shielded by the body. Oh, that's nice. I mean, it sort of makes sense. Um, you shouldn't be able to sort of damage them through other zombies. So let's see, have they woken up now? Let me re-enable the AI. No. <laughs> That's all right. I've just destroyed this the roof here and shot a few rockets. You know, let's not wake up. And of course. And there's some changes. Sledgehammer's paying out 20%, 25% uh, harvest amount. I, I really don't use the sledgehammer. One really nice thing, and let's do that. Uh, set time uh, 1.23.58. So one of the challenges, you know, you actually didn't see that here, which is probably good. If you look at the light as it goes over to zero, zero, I don't think I saw anything. Yeah, you didn't see anything. In previous versions, you would see this really weird where uh, moonlight would get extremely bright as we hit, well, 12 midnight. And then it would change again at uh, at you know, a few hours in, etc. It's just really weird. You see this dark and then got really bright and then got dark again. And that seems to be something they've changed. And that's really, really good. Let's go back to daytime though. It mentions that rocket launcher explosions are no longer doing the damage list in XML. Something fixed. I guess uh, that's why they killed them. I, I know that was an issue in previous versions where rocket launcher were really ineffective. Here it seems to be okay. 
they seem to be shooting the them just fine let me do that here let me yep they killed all of them okay that's as it should be <laughs> i know there have been cases where you were shooting at them and like they take a little bit of damage but they never killed anything and i think i did some of that testing as well in the uh, previous alpha 17 versions where they just did not seem to take a lot of damage from them and it's good to see that fixed Another thing they mentioned as having fixed is the removed Christmas items from loot table. I'm not really sure I like that. I mean, I kind of liked finding the Santa hat and everything. I guess they want to only have that for Christmas. Maybe it's uh, worthwhile for them to reconsider how to handle holiday items. Maybe have an option toggleable in the server settings or in the game options. I see that uh, being the case in some other uh, survival kind of games where you can toggle on and off whether you have these uh, holiday items and if you like them then you get the holiday items. If you don't then you don't get them. Because that would sort of remove that whole thing of having to patch it in and out. You literally just have a toggle so if you want to have holiday items then you will you come Easter you get the Easter bunny maybe you have Christmas you get uh, the the Santa hat etc etc and if you have a disabled then you simply never get them they just simply don't show up in the loot table so maybe it's better to have that in an option as opposed to patching it every few months so one of the challenges the game has had in previous version is how it handles things like mining helmet and the night vision goggles so I'm going to try this out so I just put on the mining helmet here and if you play multiplayer you would know that even if I enable it here and let me see if I can uh, do Nope, not this one, this one. And I look around. For me, on my client, I can actually see everything. I know it, it really affects, but if I have a friend, he will never see the light, which means that regardless of how many friends he has that is using the mining helmet, it's still not brighter for him, even though obviously I'm lighting up this whole area. It was entirely client side. It was never transferred to the other clients. And I believe that's something they have fixed. And that's really, really good because it's important. If you're having a multiplayer and other your friends are having mining helmets, you should benefit as well. Now let's try out the night vision goggles that they have said were, ooh, oh, this looks really good. Oh, this is nice. Night fishing goggles were <laughs> always challenging. Uh, it, it's sort of like they were never useful because the vision was really terrible. Wow, but now, now they really boosted them up. Oh, I like this. Look at this. Now, I like the colors, like this really green vibrant. And I turned off. It's like takes a moment for my own eyes just to adjust. I turned on and I can really see. Oh, this is good. Oh, they fell down there, spawned in. No, this is really good. Okay, I like this change. I really like this change. Let me see if I take out this one. Okay, let's take out this one. And let's take out... Okay, so now it's even darker. And I enable the... I can really see. Maybe they're a little bit too powerful, but it looks really sharp. You don't have this really crappy, crappy, uh, fussy view. Oh, so this makes, this makes sense, actually. Maybe it makes it a little bit too powerful. Maybe this should be some kind of a battery indicator or something. Hmm, something to think about because this looks a little bit too good to use at night. I mean, you can turn down your, your gamma really, uh, well, pretty much all the way and just wear these ones and the zombies will not be able to see you. And that's maybe a little bit too powerful. And there are, of course, there are a host of other small changes in there. So let's see what I care about. Now, I care about things like dynamite will not explode in player's hand. No, not really. That's not something that I care about. I like things like this mentioned fixed like netlib randomly dis disconnecting all players. And this is something that you might run in, especially when you're having servers where it just you get disconnects. Is there anything behind me? No. Let me uh, fly up a little bit here so I don't get wasted from behind. So things like that is something that is really important that they, they fix it. It's also not very easy to track down from a bug finding uh, perspective. The next one that mentions the arrow rest mod, and I don't even know what arrow rest. I never even saw this mod before. Okay, so this is something that it wasn't in the loot tables. I don't even know if it was in the. Interesting. I don't even know if it was in the previous hour. Oh, it, it's not mentioned as mod. That's why iron rest. Okay, so I've never seen this one before. And uh, this is something that apparently they mentioned was not in the loot tables. Uh, you can never find it. And I actually don't even know about it. I, I wish they would call them arrow rest mod. 
I don't think it even shows up when I look at mods here. Not that I can see unless I'm blind. I do have some extra mods, obviously, from Jake's uh, melee mod. Uh, but yeah, so it's good. Good to see this one show up finally. Uh, improves accuracy of a bow. Yeah, that's that's good. I, I get you, all these things are good to have. It. If it's in the game, they have to make sure you can find them or craft them or both. And here's another thing that they mentioned. They say pipe bombs are really weak against sleeper zombies. So let's see if we can sneak in and... Uh, I bet they won't hear what hit them. Okay, did that... Oh, it killed one! So it probably did about 100 damage, 125 damage. That's good, because that's something, again, was part of that whole explosion thing. You would use explosive, and it wouldn't really do much against the zombie. So, uh, good to see that being fixed, and... Dead. Nice. Finally. And I think this is where it mentions slightly further down. It says explosion damage decreasing per collider. So it was mostly zero. And I think that was part of the problem. They were seeing a zero damage. Maybe the first uh, zombie might see some. Or maybe the leg would take some damage. And that was it. Nothing more was going to take damage. So the leg takes damage. The body and the head maybe didn't. Things like that. Or the arm took dam uh, damage and then the body didn't. Maybe it was things to, uh, to that effect. One thing that people really liked in Alpha 16 was that they introduced where you can actually dismember zombies. So you whack them in the arm, you whack them in the leg, and of course the head, and you can actually dismember them. You can make them all crawl, for instance, sort of similar to what would happen if they walked over spikes and then lost the legs. This is something that they seem to have removed or maybe bugged out in the previous Alpha 17 versions. And I believe they've actually fixed that. They say they fixed that player cannot provoke a dismemberment on zombie arms legs, but traps can. So hopefully this is something that's been updated. So I'm going to see if I can... Uh... Alright. Sorry, sir. This one is... Oh, come on. Your leg is really tough, I know. Okay, now I got... I, I, okay, that's really weird. That's not giving anything. Uh, am I in 17.3 here? Let's try the arm, then. Come on, let's try the arm, I say. Let's try the arm. Okay, this is really weird. I'm not sure they fully fixed it, because... Oh, you're so noisy. Can I go somewhere here? Oh, it's so noisy. So I've actually, if you look here, I've taken the deep cuts. Or oh, maybe it's not just for power attacks. Oh, it is. 45% chance for the power attacks. Yeah, let's do that again then. Okay. Okay, this is the power attack and I'm not dismembering at all. That's one in five or something. Yeah, that's a little bit too little. Okay, this one is dead. Okay, let's try this again. Should be 45%. Maybe it's... Okay, so at least that is working. There was definitely less of that in the previous... Oh yeah, this is what you want to see. Sorry, this is a little bit... Oh, he died. Okay, sorry. This is a little bit gruesome, I know. But it's one of those things that is... You have the skills. Why wasn't it working? And I guess it was a... Yeah, it was a bug somewhere. Oh, and there goes the arm. Okay, there goes all of him. I take the arm. Oh, I can. Okay, so that's really nice to see that finally come back. And it looks like it's actually able to even kill the zombie. Interesting. So maybe you still kill them before you actually end up dismembering them. Can I take his leg? All right. So let's try that with... Let's see. I'm using a shotgun. Oh, yeah. That definitely works. So let's spawn in a little bit more. Let's get another couple of weights. Oh, yeah. So I'm now using the, oops, I'm using the, the one with the slugs because they do a lot more damage uh, and they don't spread it out. Let's see if I can do that from this one as well. And I do an arm here. Yep. Oh, okay. So they definitely have fixed some of that. Hey, okay, I think she, he died there. I think he also died. Fine. All right, let me enable the AI again. Okay, they're slowly moving in their way out. Let me reload. Oh, what? What the? Okay. I guess he's pretty good at walking on one leg. Okay, we took the arm there. Oh, that's interesting. You see, once you hit it and you dismember, there's... Oh, yeah. It takes damage and it goes back into the usual... Hmm. 
goes back into the usual animation even though it shouldn't but this is something that you could see in alpha 16 you can actually literally delimp all of them and they would not be even crawling around i don't think i can do that here because i think he might die okay okay lay down okay he lays down take this one all right let's see if he's still alive no i don't think he is Oh, he's definitely lost <laughs> both his legs. Okay, so there's still some bugs involved in doing that, but at least it's better than previously where you couldn't do it at all. And I guess he's dead. And are you dead? Oh, okay, he's really totally dead. Anyway, so at least you're back to being able to dismember with your weapons, which is good because you have the perks, you have the mods. I even put in the... Let me see here, the Cripple M mod... Oh, I didn't. Oh, I forgot to put it in. Anyway, <laughs> that will just make it easier. But at least it's good they fixed it. But let's look at some of the known issues that are still there. They still haven't been able to fix the self-medicated. It's not working. Not being able to purchase it. I don't know why. Maybe it's just really difficult to fix it. But it's unfortunate. They still have that really bad issue with the connections to servers where it says try removing Steam networking as a disabled function from the server config.xml. This is something that back in the alpha 17 zero experimental it was just fine then the launch 17.1 a lot of people installing servers dedicated servers were having issues you actually have to remove that one being disabled and it's really counterintuitive because if you have opened up your network you shouldn't need to had to have steam network enabled but apparently you do so there's something seems to be something that is connected there that they are not able to figure out maybe it's one of the underlying libraries that are causing problems but it does cause problems for people starting servers i've had a lot of people coming to me for advice and this is one of the first thing i tell them to try to change that option and often it works there are another couple of issues that i wish that they had fixed one of them relates to line claim block and I don't see any changes here. So you might know you put it down and it says it's active and everything. However, once in a while, and I'm not really sure when or how, it will become inactive even if you haven't placed down a second line claim block. So you come back to your base and it's inactive, which means that you have to remove it and you have to place another one. Or you place it down, it's active, you log out, then later on someone comes and raids your place because it's suddenly become inactive. So it still happens and that's really frustrating. That might be connected also to the other video I did regarding land claim blocks not preventing zombie respawns. Maybe it's because there are simply big bugs around the land claim block as a whole. I don't know, but it's something that I wish they would take a look at. Another issue is with how the vehicles are managed. Now it mentions another known issue is when kicked while in vehicle interaction window, vehicle may become in unresponsive. And this is a huge problem. I personally see this fairly frequently, both single player and multiplayer servers are even worse because you have multiple players in there. If something happens while someone is actually using a motorcycle, maybe you die or you get kicked off or the game crashes or whatever, you actually can lose the whole vehicle. It'll be there, but you can't interact with it later on. So now, now I can still interact with it. But if I en end up being uh, disconnected while I'm in the vehicle, it might become unresponsive and that's it. Goodbye. You can't actually ever access it. You can't get your things. You can't drive it. You can't even remove it. And again, it's just one of those bugs that they have to fix because time and time again, I see players on servers just highlighting that, hey, I got a vehicle. I can't access it. What can I do? And it's like, sorry, just one of those bugs. And they really should be fixing these ones because it's actually quite serious. You don't want to have a server where people keep losing their vehicles because the game bugs out, crashes, reloads, something happens, and then too bad, you lost your vehicle. So I wish they would take a look at that and fix that one. So that captures some of the things in 17.3. I personally wish that they would have done more for building, add textures, add ways to create some of these decorative blocks. It's sort of, Alpha 16 was really good when it came to painting and decorating your, your house. Alpha 17 took a step back. You have less textures and the textures look like crap off and you, you paint these this blotchy faded concrete colors. So it's like, well, I just mixed the paint. Why is it all faded? It hasn't been around in the sun for 20 years. Why does it look so bad? So I wish they would put that into a new version. They should have put that in 17.3 because it seems that just adding texture shouldn't be that cumbersome. Building needs more love. That's really what I was hoping for in 17.3. And unfortunately, you didn't really see any of that at all. Maybe 17.4, maybe in alpha 18. 
I don't know. What do you think? What things should be in 17.4? Do you think there will be 17.4 or should they be focusing on Alpha 18? Let me know in the comment section below and thank you very much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel and why not come and uh, join me in my Discord or join me on my Twitter. Follow me on my Twitter. I usually follow back all the gaming channels that are following me and take a look at the content that people are providing. But have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.